Welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde. I am joined alongside my co-host and good friend, London Beth. And today, and welcome back, London, by the way. London's been away at a uh, basketball camp over the last week, so Tony has been taking his place. Tony did a great job, though I do prefer London over Tony. Sorry, Tony. But London, go us in and what are we talking about today? Nick, it's great to be back. Uh, I, I definitely missed uh, doing the podcast and stuff. The camp went well. Uh, boys and girls worked really hard. One one week was pretty hot. The next one was pretty cool. So uh, it was it was good. It was good. Uh, but today uh, we are going to be covering the Chicago Bears, um, and it's something of a good problem right now that the Chicago Bears have. Um, it's something that I don't think we're used to as Chicago Bears fans, uh, but it is the packed wide receiver room. And there's no doubt that people will be cut this coming up after training camp. We got to get down to that 53 man roster that I know you and I have talked to, you know, you and I have talked about, but let's get into it, Nick. Let's talk about this packed room of the wide receivers. I know Darnell Mooney, um, again, has been a completely hot topic working out with Allen Robinson. I'm very excited to get into this. Uh, and I know you are also. Yeah, absolutely. But before we begin, we'd like to thank our today's sponsor fully promoted Fully Promoted, formerly known as Embroid Me, is Chicagoland's premier branded apparel and promotional product store. From poles to hats to hell, even towels, Mike Grossman over at Fully Promoted uh, has your back. He just did a great project for me for a company that I'm a part of. Check out how clean this polo is. Embroidered, let's see, I've got it all over here. Embroidered, clean, dry fit, you name it, Mike's got it. For more information, please look in for Mike's contact information in the description. No order is too big or small too small mike will get it done and make sure you tell him that nick sent you but topic number one of the day the current wide receiver room of the chicago bears very packed very crazy the current chicago bears wide receiver room goes as followed in predictive order according to the chicago bears depth chart alan robinson darnell mooney those are two easy ones but then anthony miller uh dave help me out with this name london damian bird yes, i just call him bird I got, it. Uh, okay, for anyone that watches, they know I mess up names a lot, and I got that one on the first try. Marquise Goodwin, shout out to him for at the, trying out for the USA Olympics right now for long jump. Shout out to him. Javon Wims, Riley Ridley, Daz Newsome, and about six other unsigned free agents that are very likely not going to make the roster. We're focusing on the guys that do have a legitimate chance at the competition, so let's just go into it. That's a lot of people to start off, by the way. And usually teams only have about four to five wide receivers on the active roster. Some are put down as wide receivers, but really they're kick return, punt return specialists. So it's just another thing for the Bears to have. But that's pretty full. And I know London likes a lot of these guys. But before we jump into who's for sure locks, like I let, London kind of hit on it earlier. And I, I want you to kind of dig deeper into it is just the fact that this is a good problem that the Bears are not used to having. Yeah, I mean, Nick, the biggest thing is since I can even remember, um, you know, really understanding football, you know, um, Mohammed, uh, uh, who else do we have back then? We had, you know, Brandon Marshall. Yeah, Musu Muhammad, thank you. Who went then to the Carolina Panthers or came, you know, went back and forth, kind of like Julius Peppers. Um, (laughs) You know, we had Brandon Marshall. um, Then, you know, after that, it was Alshon Jeffrey and so on and so forth kind of through. I know Devin Hester's been getting a lot of hype on Twitter as a wide receiver and people saying he should have been used more. I don't know if I exactly agree, but since the days of the Chicago Bears, the one thing we've always had is great defenses, great running backs, never really um, top wide receivers or packed wide receiver rooms. Um, it's just, it's never been a thing. It's not a Chicago Bears way. And I think this is actually, and I will go out there and make this bold statement that this is the best wide receiver room top to bottom that the Chicago Bears have had in their history. Um, Hands down. Hands hands down. down. And you got the top guy, Allen Robinson, who's an absolute top five receiver in the NFL. You got Darnell Mooney, a breakout player who can play the inside, the outside, the slot, all over the place, making, you know, guys, you know, of the name of, you know, Jalen Ramsey, um, his son. And then you just have a lot of speed after that. And a lot of people don't understand that the NFL, um, if you look at the Chiefs, if you look at, Um, other teams that have really good wide receiver rooms a lot of it is due to the speed on the back end of their groups that makes them so dynamic and that's exactly what we have we have mark you know we have uh marquise goodwin who is you know like we talked about is at the olympics right now 
uh, you know, trying, you know, doing his trials and everything. That's a super athlete. I know Bird is extremely fast. That's kind of what he came out of the uh, college into the NFL, and that's what he did in the uh, at the Patriots for a long time. Um, Anthony Miller, you know, maybe he'll have like his redemption year. Um, and then, you know, the guy we just drafted, Newsom, absolutely, you know, has a lot more speed than what his 40 dictates, just like Darnell Mooney did. Um, and that's just, it, it should be exciting for Bears fans. You should really be excited about this um, room and less injuries plague us because Goodwin has injury issues. Bird has injury issues. Anthony Miller can't stay on the field because he can't keep, you know, his fist from hitting other players. Same with Wims. Yeah, that's Javon with... Wims. That's Wims. Oh, Wims yeah, is the uh, header. Uh, Wims, Wims is the header. Still. And then Javon Wims and Ridley and, you know, Newsom just got injured in mini camp. And so that will be the thing I think ultimately that everybody should be worried about. But if these guys can stay healthy, stay out of trouble, you know, catch the deep passes, because um, that's what I was going to refer to, Miller, you know, um, not just dropping so many balls. If those kind of things can happen, then we actually might have a very good wide receiver room to complement a good quarterback room, a good offensive line. And I personally will go down and say uh, a top five running back also. Oh, watch out. All right. London's making big, bold moves. He, he has been, you know, bottled up while at this camp trying to get on a podcast. So watch out for more big, bold moves today, but going into who are the four sure locks. Okay. Allen Robinson, we don't really have to hit on that. He is the number one wide receiver on this team. He is the leader of the wide receiver group. You know, there's no doubt about it. And we're paying him a boatload of money. There is no doubt that he is a four sure lock followed by Darnell Mooney only because of the fact that he has a kid now in Jalen Ramsey. So the bears were like, Hey, we need to support his family. I I'm just kidding. He was breakout of player of the year last year amongst the Chicago bears. He's cheap and effective still, still on his rookie contract. He still has three years left, technically two years after this season. So entering the second year of his four year contract. And he's been working out with Allen Robinson all off season. There was actually a video today that dropped onto Twitter. Make sure you head over to our Twitter account. Uh, we did retweet it for you to see, but they're just putting in work. They're working together. They look good. And I know the bears are very excited about these two, but London, who is your for sure third guy? So I know you have the list in front of you. We said it earlier. I, I know some of these are pretty obvious. I have mine, but I'm curious who is your for sure third lock on the bears wide receiving court. We're going to say the same guy. I, uh, and I can see it on that list. I know we talked about it before. It's going to be good. One. Um, I think if he comes back healthy, doesn't get injured, you know, kind of shakes off that injury from last year, he was a close to 900 to a thousand yard receiver for the 49ers. He was extremely dynamic, took the top off every single time he stepped on the field. His biggest problem just was injuries. And honestly, before he got injured last year, he was working his way up. He went from 200 yards, I think to 400 yards to 800 yards, and then almost broke a thousand yards, then got injured. Um, if he comes back healthy, ready, and kind of back to that old form from two years ago, so that would be the 2019 season when he almost broke a thousand yards um, and doesn't, you know, hurt himself at the Olympics or anything. I very much expect him to be our slot receiver. I expect him to take the top off of stuff. And that's really going to take a lot of pressure off Allen Robinson and Darnell Mooney. Those guys are, you know, route running Kings. They're going to be able to work the inside and we can just send Godwin straight down the middle uh, on go routes and pull the safeties away so that they can't double cover, you know, either one of our other receivers. Uh, he just is the most consistent receiver outside of that. I would say Anthony Miller. I'm not, I'm really out on Anthony Miller to be completely honest. Bird again is kind of more of that specialty guy. I think he would wind up more on like the fourth or fifth receiver on the depth chart. Right. Um, somebody that can kind of come in have a few catches and a few games, you know, for first downs, you know, just that kind of stuff, kind of how the, the Patriots used him. I don't expect him to be any more than that, but I am very, I was very high on Goodwin, you know, uh, two years ago before he got injured when he almost broke a thousand yards. I think I had him on my fantasy football team and he just popped off. Uh, and so if he comes back healthy, if he has a, you know, especially if he has a really good trial for the Olympics and just gets all that confidence, I expect him to be wide receiver three. Yeah, I mean, I, I wrote down the exact same thing. You kind of jumped the gun on our fourth guy, or my fourth guy, at least. I don't know who yours for sure fourth guy is, but I think that you're right. I think he, I mean, it's, it's 
first of all, going back to his injuries last year, everyone and their mother was injured last year in the NFL because it was COVID football. Guys' bodies weren't prepared. Guys were unsure there was going to be a season. So there wasn't as much training. There wasn't as much, there was practically no preseason at all. It was amongst themselves. So I think that, you know, the injury bug is definitely left this guy's blood. And the fact that he was injured as much as he was in the, and he's at USA Olympic trials right now shows how much of a freak athlete he, he is. He's freakishly fast. He can jump very high. That is exactly why he's at the Olympics right now for high jump. So, or long jump, excuse me. He is on his way to being the best number three wide receiver we've had in a long time and kind of an upgrade, like literally, you know, that meme where it says upgrade. And then like you start with one picture, then you press upgrade. It's another picture. Take Taylor Gabriel, press the upgrade button. You get Marquise Goodwin. That's kind of where I'm exactly 100%. 100 percent and also on the fact the top the thing that he was really brought here for was punt return we don't want Tyreek Cohen out there again because one he's too small we can't afford an injury like that again because he's so dynamic I mean yes Goodwin could do the exact same thing as Cohen but Cohen is a living breathing running back at the end of the day and Goodwin has always been a wide receiver kick return guy so I think that Goodwin is going to play that position Gabriel did that too while I mean we had Cordell Patterson so it was a little different but I think that this guy, also, a lot of people don't speak about this enough, in my opinion. He was the first wide receiver to call Justin Fields and go, hey, let's go work out. So he is showing that he is invested in the Chicago Bears. I think that looks really good in the eyes of the coaches, in the eyes of Ryan Pace, in the eyes of his teammates. Now, the fourth for sure guy, I'm going with uh, Damery Bird. I am. That's my guy. That's my guy because we need veterans. And he is, like you kind of said, another good win. Just literally a different name, different human being, but the same type of player. And that is something that the Bears have been missing for a long time. Take Anthony Miller, press the upgrade button, you get Bird. That's exactly what I see in this kind of guy. He also can play punt return and kick return. So the Bears are setting themselves up to have utility guys. And and sure, I think that, you know, one of them could be strictly a special teams guy. It'd likely be Bird because just because of the speed, but overall, I think that bird is the number four guy for sure. Lock. He is on the roster and coaches like Goodwin and bird a lot. And I really like to hear that. And they look really good in video. They've been working together. They've been chopping it up. Uh, but London, who is your fourth guy? I'm going to hate to say this. And if, if he bites me on this, I'm going to be real pissed about it, but I'm going to go Anthony Miller. Um, I've been seeing some, I know, and I've been seeing some videos on mini camp and just, you know, um, OTAs and just some other kinds of stuff that have been going on. He and looks good. Doing, he does look good. I mean, he's making one headed catches. He's doing kind of what he did back when he was at Memphis. Um, and then his first year where he kind of like came onto the scene where everybody's like, oh, this could be a very underrated wide receiver that the Bears stole in the draft again. My biggest problem is, is he going to stay consistent? Is he going to yes. continue to work or is he going to get drop heavy and then lose his temper and then it's going to all go downhill all over again? I honestly think that will happen as he will be continue to be inconsistent, but I think he's going to have a great, you know, he had great camp so far. I think he's going to have a great training camp and I think he's going to get that fourth spot on the depth chart because I do think Burr is more of a punt returner, kick returner, kind of specialist player. Um, and I think Anthony Miller is more of a pure wide receiver. I think he'll get that four spot. He'll get a little more playing time. The moment he becomes inconsistent though, I hope they pull him, cut him and get rid of him uh, because I do feel that he is a very kind of toxic guy, especially for a yes. locker room after his actions and everything that happened last year. But if he comes back humbled, if he comes back ready to work, if he comes back and it's just an absolute menace, I am not going to be upset about that we put him, you know, at the fourth. Uh, I'm not going to be upset that I put him on fourth on the depth chart. Yeah, I mean, he does look good. He looks good with fields. I 100% agree. So we're going to enter our next topic, prove it territory. So Anthony Miller is my number one prove it territory kind of guy because, yes, he knows the offense. Yes, he has shown his potential to be a very good wide slot wide receiver in the NFL, but that attitude problem, man, I don't know. You get one bad seed and it, it spreads like crazy guys get mad. I did not like what he did last year, especially in the playoff game against the saints. 
nothing's as bad as whims. What I'll get to in a second, dropping it in the end zone, completely changing the momentum of the game. But on national television, when you're going up to your coach, can't look him in the eye when you're in your mid twenties, a professional player for now three years, and you're acting like a child because he pulled you. That's not, that's not going to fly. And he still has an attitude problem on Twitter. You know, I, I, you know, I want him to mature. He's a father now also, which, you know, that, that changes people. And, you know, you want to set the best example for your kid. I'm hoping that, you know, this, his kid actually makes him a better football player. And he has all the talent in the world. There is no doubt about that, but that attitude, man, uh, I, I know, I know you're in the same boat as me. You were a collegiate athlete. I was an athlete for a long time. And when you have some bad blood on the team, uh, it, it affects everyone. And then some it's, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, it's absolutely tough. And it kind of is the same thing for the next guy that we're going to talk about. We're kind of the proven guy is Javon Wims. Javon I mean, Wims. And, and you can kind of like slash Javon Wims and Riley Ridley. Um, you know, they kind of came out as later round picks had a lot of upside, but Javon wins the same kind of thing. Is it just like, it's the attitude problems. It's the not being able to stay healthy on the field. It's the dropping these just passes that NFL wide receivers should be able to catch. Um, and just having, you know, not, you know, kind of becoming more consistent in the NFL, but still hanging around because I'm guessing at practice, at different kinds of things, he probably still looks good. Um, yeah. That's my biggest problem. And it's, it's kind of the same with Riley Ridley not staying healthy he kind of had a lot of hype like oh you know his brother and him like you know what's gonna happen here Uh, same kind of thing i just it's really really tough for me with javon wins and riley ridley and honestly i think we kind of cut our losses with both of them and move on and bring some you know new blood in or you know move some undrafted you know free agent or free agent wide receivers up that might you know produce into like an adam Thielen or somebody like that um, cause I think they've just got their chances and I think they've proven over and over again that they're either a injured, which doesn't get them on the field or B they just don't make the plays that NFL wide receivers can make. And guess what? That happens. I mean, it, it, just, it, happens. it happens. It's a normal thing. It is a completely normal thing. And you know, I'm happy you hit on Javon Wims. The reason why I have him not in cut territory is because he is the only other big wide receiver that's proven in the NFL that is, has NFL experience. He has dropped probably the biggest pass in the last five years for the Chicago bears. He dropped that flat out. No doubt about it. If, but second behind Cody Parkey is the drop in the end zone against the saints from Javon Wims. I mean, I really liked this guy before the fight against the saints during the regular season. He started to show that promise. He is a big dude. I mean, I think he's like six, three, Robinson six two. The rest of the guy, Bird, Goodwin, Miller, are all short guys. And I mean, Darnell Mooney's barely six foot. So you know, the Bears need that big body guy. That's the only reason why I have him improve at territory. He, but he has a lot to prove. And you know, kind of going into the last guy is Daz Newsome. I know he's a rookie. I know he's hurt, but I think that he has the most to prove to be on the active roster his first year because he could turn out to be another Riley Ridley where he ends up being on the practice squad his first year. And I know he's hurt. I know he's a lot of people are like, he's another Darnell Mooney, but you can't put that hype on him because if you put that hype on him, well, guess what's going to happen. He's going to, he's good. It's not, it's going to be a bust kind of like Riley Ridley, who we'll get to in a second, but you know, I, I just don't want them to be like, Oh, it's another Darnell Mooney. Let Daz Newsome make a name for himself. And then we'll make the comparison in the future. What do you think? That's the biggest, and that's the biggest problem with Chicago sports and Chicago Bears sports fans is Darnell Moody was just such a lightning in a bottle for us that we were like, oh my gosh, any like, you know, any small kind of quick, quicker wide receiver who has a slower 40 time that we're going to draft, which that's, I mean, if you look at Darnell Mooney and Daz Newsom, like in, you know, in college, they look like the identical players, yes. really. And everybody's going to be like, oh my gosh, like he's going to be the next Darnell Moody. Like we need him to pop off. Honestly, I agree with you. I think Bears fans need to calm the heck down about it. Yes, he has the potential to move all the way up the depth chart to the third, I would say the third, fourth spot. Like he can beat out a lot of those people in front of him. I still just, after watching over and over and over again, the tape, he is not Darnell Mooney. He doesn't work like Darnell Mooney. 
I don't think he's going to have, you know, the consistent, the consistent ability to catch the ball like Darnell Mooney. I mean, you just, you got to slow down with these players, especially the guys that are kind of like on a whim, you know, later round picks, like it just, you got to slow down again. He does have that potential and he can be that third or fourth wide receiver, but we just got to take a break on it. I mean, he's injured right now. Uh, you know, he's got a rehab. We'll see what training camp comes around and get yeah, preseason. And like I said, preseason game, he could come out, Justin Fields, him and Justin Fields could have a great connection. And guess what? That might be another lightning in the bottle that Ryan, you know, King Pace found out of, you know, North Carolina. Absolutely. And well, let's hope it's turned out a lot better than the last guy we took out of North Carolina, at least on the offensive side of the football. But before we move into our final topic of the day of who we think is gone, another, a word from our other sponsor, High Level Camps. HLC is the longest running boys and girls AAU basketball program in the state of Wisconsin. HLC was established in 1995 by their founder and retired WNBA player, Cheryl Moore. 27 years and counting, Cheryl. Keep it going. For more information, visit higherlevelcamps.com and say just another year Chicago sent you. Bingo. You heard it. You know Higher Level Camps. London was at camp. See him at camp, higherlevelcamps.com. Make sure you check it out. But last topic today, who is for sure gone that isn't an undrafted uh, rookie free agent? I, I mean, we've, we kind of already hit on it before. I got Riley Ridley. I think Riley yeah. Ridley has had plenty of opportunities. He is not his brother also. Everyone was hoping for that same gene pool. I mean, no, he is not his brother. He is cool on Twitter. That doesn't win us football games. I'm sorry. I, you know, and I, I wish it best of luck. If he makes a team and rips it up, just put my foot in my mouth already. But like, seriously, I, it's just that this guy has not worked. And London, I brought this up with you before, and a lot of people don't remember. And a lot of people go, oh, he was a young guy. It doesn't matter. You're in the NFL. You're supposed to make plays. And it was Bears Green Bay the uh, season before. So that would be 2019. When the Bears playoff hopes were hanging by a thread, Mitch Trubisky threw a pass right to Riley Ridley in the back of the end zone and dropped it like Javon Wimps. And a lot of people don't remember that because people think of the lateral that uh, I believe it was Ryan Knoll didn't give up and Allen Robinson was wide open behind him. Ryan Knoll literally saved uh, Riley Ridley's career, even though Knoll is still on the roster. But a lot of people don't remember that play. And I remember I was sitting in a bar uh, downtown and I just remember throwing my hat down. I'm like, that's the game right there. And everyone, everyone was like, yeah. And then the whole lateral thing happened. And it's like, that's the game. And I'm like, no, we could have, we, we didn't even need the lateral if it wasn't for Riley Ridley dropping it. I'm fired up about it, but I want this guy off the roster. London, who are you going with? I'm going Javon Wims. I don't think Whoa. he makes it through training camp. Yeah, I don't, think he, I don't think he makes it through training camp. I think we'll bring in other people. Um, you know, a lot of cuts. The thing is, the thing is, is a lot of people don't understand. These NFL teams have 70 to 80, 75 to 80 players right now on their roster. They got to cut that down to about 53. We all know wide receivers will be the first ones to go on other teams. So what I expect is, honestly, I expect Riley really to be gone. I expect Wims to be gone. I, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if a few others, you know, kind of in the bird range, you know, are gone also. And then once other teams do their cutting, we waiver them, bring a few guys in, um, you know, that might be bigger bodies, you know, might be more proven players, so on and so forth. That I wouldn't be, I, I would not be, I would not not be surprised by that. Uh, but after Javon Wims, A, just the season he had overall, the, uh, the season and then career he's had overall, the very inconsistent. Last year, the fights, dropping that wide open touchdown, which was just completely deflating and kind of a representation of that entire season we had. Um, I just, I don't, I don't think they trust him. I don't think they know what to do with him. And I think that he will, you know, not be able to outshine guys like, Goodwin and Newsome and other players. And I think he'll just get lost and get cut. Well, you heard it. That's who we're thinking the Bears wide receiver room will be. More to come after training camp, which is coming up very, very quickly. So stay tuned for more podcasts on that. But with that, London, welcome back. Happy you're back from camp. Thanks, and with that, that's today's episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde. Join alongside my co-host, London Beth, and we will see you guys next time. <laughs>